thousands of women are finding that economical no-rubbing Aero Wax makes dingy old floors shine and sparkle look like new. Just apply, and in six to nine minutes, it dries to a hard, lustrous waxed finish that saves countless scrubbings and polishings. Yet, Aero Wax costs only 25 cents a pint at grocery, hardware, drug, and chain stores. Get Aero Wax, A-E-R-O-W-A-X, tomorrow. Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, is on the air. Ladies and gentlemen, the makers of Colonel's Toothpaste present Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, one of the most famous characters of American fiction and one of radio's most thrilling dramas. Tonight and every Thursday night from 7.30 to 8 Eastern Wartime, the famous old investigator will take from his files and bring to us one of his most celebrated missing persons cases. But first, if your teeth are not every bit as bright and lustrous as they should be, Resolve right now to bring out the natural sparkle of your smile with Colonos, a high-polishing toothpaste. You see, the new Colonos acts on your teeth as a jeweler's polish does on tarnished silver, safely, gently removing dingy surface stains, thereby uncovering the full natural sparkle of your smile. Ask your druggist for Colonos, K-O-L-Y-N-O-S, Colonos Toothpaste. Now, Mr. Keene, tracer of lost persons. Tonight he brings us the case of the missing witness, one of the strangest of his career. A case in which murder, three beautiful women, and a fashion show are all strangely mingled. But listen now. As our story opens, a man is seated in a chair. Across his head slants a bar of sunlight. And on his face is a completely incredulous smile. He rises slowly to say... Don't be a fool, my dear. Put it down before you hurt yourself. Can't you hear me? Stop this ridiculous play acting. Put it down, I say. (laughs) You really did it. I didn't think you had it in you. (laughs) Not you. Now our scene shifts to the quiet office of Mr. Keene as his spinster secretary, Miss Ellis, enters to ask a favor. Mr. Keene, I wonder if I might get off early this afternoon. You want to do some shopping, Miss Ellis? Oh, no, no. I'm going to a fashion show. Why, Miss Ellis, I didn't know you were interested in fashion shows. Well, are you insinuating that I dress like a bag of potatoes? No, no, no. no. uh... As a matter of fact, Mr. Keene, it's something very, very special. You see, when I was living in Queens about 15 years ago, there used to be a little widow next door. Pretty little creature. Oh, such a struggle to make a living for herself and her daughter. I'd give her a bit of sewing every now and then to help, and... (laughs) Well, you won't believe me when I tell you her name. Try me. Mary Blaine. Today, she's the most brilliant fashion designer in America. Good heavens, that is interesting. She helped originate the little black dress, the dinner suit, the short evening gown. She's enormously famous and wealthy now. Yes, I read a piece about Mrs. Blaine in one of the magazines. It called her the epitome of the successful career woman. Well, she's giving her mid-season fashion show today, and she asked me to come for all lang syne. Mm. Brilliant woman. Ah, uh, Mary's there. Hey, look here, Mr. Keene. Why don't you come along and meet her? Oh, me at a fashion show? Oh, there'll be dozens of men there, and all in love with beautiful Mary Blaine. Oh, oh. oh do come. Now, you've nothing special to do this afternoon. Well, uh, uh, all right, Miss Ellis. I'll do it. <laughs> I told you 
do their be lots of men? Oh, that's the general talking to her right now. She is beautiful, all right. But she's paid a price for her success. How do you mean? There's an expression in her face of strain, anxiety. Maybe. Oh, she's noticed me. Here she comes. Isn't she stunning in that little gray number? Mm. Miss Ellis, I'm so glad you could come. Well, thank you, Mary, dear. And I took the liberty of bringing my boss, Mr. Keene. How do you do, Mr. Keene? Delighted to know you. I've been hearing about you for years from Miss Ellis. How wise you are and how kind. Now, now, don't give away any secrets. <laughs> But it's very sweet of you to break away from all those generals and things to say hello to just me, Mary. You were my friend when I was nobody. Well, you've always deserved the best friends in the world, Mary. And, uh, uh, oh, look, somebody's waiting to you. Oh, oh, my manager, it's time for the show to begin. I'll have to get up to the microphone there to announce the new models as they come by. I'm so glad to have met you, Mr. King. The pleasure was mine. Yes, she's lovely and famous but not quite happy. Oh, you with your X-ray eyes. Well, here starts the fashion parade, Mr. Keene. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, for my first offering, a long dinner dress with panel of pleated white chiffon tied with a grosgrain ribbon at the back. Mm. Isn't that stunning? Yes, even an old bachelor can see that. Uh, especially an old bachelor. <laughs> you know, it's funny, I don't see Eric Plummer here, Mr. Keene. Eric Plummer? You mean the portrait painter? Yes, and gay dog number one of New York. Oh, they're good friends, Miss Ellis? He's been infatuated with Mary for some time. You mean he and Mrs. Blaine are going to marry? Well, Mary's a strange one, Mr. Keene. Never quite sure whether men love her for herself or her importance. But it seems that Eric Plummer has finally won her heart. And now a black velour suit with lean plumb-lined skirt. A double-breasted jacket with high scrolled lapels and a scrolled hip pocket. Oh, uh, look, Mr. Keene, over there by the door. Yes, Miss Ellis? That charming little blonde, that's Mary's daughter, Bunny. Quite a young lady. <laughs> it's hard to believe that Mary would have a daughter 18 years old. Yes, yeah, she's still so young herself. Hmm. Mary won't be too pleased about her coming here. Why? Well, Mary just likes to keep Bunny away from business and career and men of the world. Oh. Mary's learned to value everything old-fashioned. A little white house with chintz curtains. And... In other words, one of America's greatest career women thinks that a woman's place is really in the home. And a simple home. Miss Ellis. Miss Ellis. Hello, Bunny, dear. Miss Ellis, how long has the show been going on? About 15 minutes. I must talk to Mother. I must. But, dear, she's up there at the microphone. You can see. Something horrible has happened. I must talk to her. But, Bunny, what do you mean? <laughs> and now, with my last offering before the intermission, another short dinner dress. <laughs> Mother, mother. She's seen you, Bunny. She's coming this way. Oh, now, dear, try to quiet yourself. And here, let me introduce you to Mr. Keene. How do you do, Bunny? Mr. Keene, you're the famous detective. I am an investigator. Well, maybe you can do something about this horrible thing. What horrible thing, Bunny? Hello, Bunny, dear. Mother. Darling, I, I thought you were going skating with your young soldier friend. No, I didn't. Oh, Mother, Mother. Oh, come, Bunny. What's happened? I, I went to Eric Plummer's studio instead half an hour ago. To Eric's studio? Why? He asked me to tea. He wanted to talk about, about doing my portrait. He might have asked me about that. Oh, it was all to be a surprise, Mother. Eric said it would make me the toast of cafe society. I'd become glamour girl number one of 1944. Oh, my dear. You should have gone skating. Bob Martin is such a fine boy, and, and his furlough will be up soon. Mother, I still haven't told you what happened. If you'd rather we left you alone. Oh, no, no, Mr. King, please stay. I beg you to. Well, what has happened, Benny? When I got to the studio and rang the doorbell... A policeman came out. A policeman? He asked me all sorts of questions because... Because, you see, Eric's been shot. Shot? Oh, through the head. He's dead, Mother. He's dead. Oh, how utterly horrible. The police said there weren't any clues at all. Oh, imagine anybody killing a wonderful man like Eric Plummer. It's ghastly. Ghastly. I want to find the person who killed Eric. I want to make them pay. And that's why I thought maybe Mr. Keene Yes, would... Mr. Keene. In a situation like this... You'd know exactly what to do. But if the police are already on the case... Well, one moment, please. 
Bunny, go over to Mr. LaRue and ask him to announce the rest of the show. All right, Mother. And you, Mr. Keene, would you please step into my office with me? Oh, forgive me, Miss Ellis. Oh, it's quite all right, Mary. Here. Here, Mr. Keene. Thank you. Well, my dear? Mr. Keene, Bunny's news did not altogether surprise me. Really? In fact, I know very well who killed Eric Plummer. You do? But first, Mr. Keene, I've heard you're the cleverest private investigator in this country. Thank you. Do something for me, please. Go to Eric's studio. Examine all the evidence. And when you come back... Yes? I'll tell you who killed Eric Plummer. Good afternoon, Captain Thomas. Oh, well, if it isn't Mr. Keene, your assistant with you, the one and only Mike. I'm glad to see you both. Good day to yourself, Captain. You're handling the police investigation, Captain? That's right, Mr. Keene. Come in. Thank you. Well, what brings you here, if I may ask? I was with Eric Plummer's fiancée, Mrs. Mary Blaine, when she got word of the shooting. She's very upset, naturally. She asked me to look into it. Do you mind? Not at all, Mr. Keene. It's murder, all right. Has the medical examiner been here yet? We're waiting for him now. If I might look at the body... Certainly. This way, sir. In this room here. Well, there he is. Just the way we found him. Hmm. He had been sitting by his easel in the center of the room. But there's nothing on the easel, boss. Just an empty frame. Quite right, Mike. We figure there was once a painting there, Mr. Keene. And the person who shot him was being painted. And ripped it off the frame to avoid identification. Yes, very possible indeed, Captain. Now then, if I may look at the wound. Right there in the head. <sighs> no powder marks. No. In the path of the bullet, it entered just above the right ear at, uh, at a distance of... Uh... Well, what would you say, Captain? Doesn't it seem to you that bullet was fired from 15 feet or more? I leave that kind of guessing to the medical examiner. Hmm. Oh, uh, may I ask why you're staring at the walls now, Mr. Keene? I was wondering about the proportions of this room. I measured it already. 20 by 20. Oh, thank you. No sign anywhere of the gun that killed him? None. May I ask how you learned about the shooting? Uh, through a neighbor. The shot resounded pretty loud in the air shaft back of that window there. And the neighbor who heard it? A gal who has the studio on the back. Portuguese gal. Rosa Avalar. She was taking a bath at the time she heard the shot. Quick as she could, she came and knocked on the door here. No answer, so she sent for us. Well, thank you, Captain. I won't trouble you any further. Rosa Avalar. This is her door, sir. All right, Mike. Wait for me on the landing below. I'd rather go in alone. Okay, Mr. Key. Miss Avila? Yes? I'm taking a hand in the investigation of the murder next door. Well, I have already talked with the police. Just one or two questions more. Why not? I want to help as much as I can. This Mr. Plummer was a very kind gentleman. In what way? Oh, he is a painter, and I am a painter. But I am a little one, a poor one. He made me many loans of materials. Very generous. As one artist to another, eh? Uh, yes, of course. Well, what I'd like to know is, did you see who entered his studio in the hours before he was shot? No. I am busy painting a flower piece. That one there? Yes. It's lovely. Uh, you like it? Very much. I presume you're working from that vase of roses on the windowsill. Yes, that's right. Hmm. Well, now, after the shooting, did you hear anybody running from the studio? Well, I am not sure. You see, I am taking a bath with the window closed. I hear a loud noise like a shot, but nothing else. Thank you. Sorry to have troubled you. <laughs> no trouble at all. Well, Mr. Keene? Mike, I'd like you to check something for me right away. Why, sure, sir. While I go back to see Mrs. Blaine, I want you to dig up the landlord of this house and just as routine, check on these points. In 
just a few moments, the scene follows between Mr. Keene and Mary Blaine. Meanwhile, remember, first impressions are usually lasting impressions. People judge you by the way they see you. They decide almost at once whether they want to know you better or not. And one of the greatest factors that influence everyone you meet is your teeth. If your teeth are dull and discolored by surface stains, chances are nine times out of ten that others find you unattractive. That's why I want to tell you about the new Colonos toothpaste. It's a high-polishing toothpaste. Thousands more people every day are discovering it does wonders in helping to remove from the teeth those dingy-looking surface stains, so that the natural sparkle and brilliance is revealed. What's more, Colonos is delightfully pleasant to use because it leaves your mouth feeling tingling clean and refreshed, for its action is like a jeweler's polish removing tarnish from a piece of silver. So if you want a smile that makes a good impression, that adds to your charm and personality, try the new Colonos toothpaste, a high-polishing toothpaste. Get Colonos, K-O-L-Y-N-O-S, Colonos toothpaste at any drugstore tonight. And now Mr. Keene faces Mary Blaine, Eric Plummer's beautiful and famous fiancée. Here, Mr. Keene, sit down. Thank you, Mrs. Blaine. You went there, you examined the evidence. Yes, I fulfilled my part of the bargain. And now I'll have to fulfill mine. Well, my dear, you said you knew who killed Eric Plummer. I did, Mr. Keene. I killed him. You? I fancied you'd say that. Oh, not because I'm shielding anybody else. Please don't get the conventional idea that my daughter, that Bunny, perhaps... No, no. But if you did it, why did you send me back to look at the evidence? Because... because I hoped and prayed that perhaps I didn't do it. Oh, I, I know all this sounds mad. Tell me the whole story. The whole story, Mr. Keene? I've given my best years to fight my way to the top. Now it's just one long nightmare of anxiety to stay there. Men flock around me. Why? For my money, my fame, or for myself? I can never be sure. When I met Eric Plummer, I... I knew he'd led a rather wild life, but he was a great artist in his own right. And when he told me he loved me, it sounded real for once. Or I hoped it was real. Yes, my dear. Go on. Lately, he's been painting my portrait. Once I took Bunny to watch, that was a mistake. Eric went to work on Bunny with all his charm. A man old enough to be her father... I want to keep Bunny wholesome and natural, Mr. Keene. I asked Eric again and again to stop turning her head. Today, this morning, I went to sit for him again. And to have it out with him once and for all. I was sitting on the dais, and he was painting. He looked up and laughed. He said... <laughs> well, my dear, you wouldn't be jealous of Bunny now, would you? Don't be silly, Eric. I just want you to leave Bunny alone. <laughs> Such a hackneyed situation, isn't it? The poor man starts by falling in love with the mother, and then suddenly he sees that, after all, it's the daughter he loves. Eric, you don't love anybody. It's all a game with you. Ah, me. The eternal triangle. He'd taken that tone with me before, Mr. Keene. Laughed at me. This time I was desperate. I wasn't going to let him ruin Bunny's life. I brought along a revolver. I took it from my bag. Eric looked up and said... Mary, you're much too sophisticated for that kind of nonsense. You must promise me never to see Bunny again. <laughs> Eric, I'm serious about this. Believe Don't me. Don't be a fool, my dear. Put it down before you hurt yourself. Can't you hear me? Stop this ridiculous play acting. Put it down, I say. <laughs> you really did it. I didn't think you had it in you. And there he lay dead before you, Mrs. Blaine. Mr. Kane, will you believe me? I was... I was horrified. I never really meant to pull that trigger. I only wanted to frighten him. And suddenly... He was... Dead. 
I suppose I should give myself up to the police. One moment. Before you do anything like that, what has become of the gun? Well, after I ran from the house, my first thought was to get rid of it. I threw it away. Where? There was a can of cinders standing in front of one of the houses. I pushed the gun inside and covered it over. That, my dear, was a great mistake. You went and buried your own best witness. Witness? Yes. To the fact that you never shot Eric Plummer. But I didn't shoot him. No. It was a physical impossibility. Why? Why do you say that? Better answer. Uh, hello? Uh, begging your pardon. May I speak to Mr. Keene? One moment, please. Mr. Keene. Thank you. Hello? Boss, Mr. Keene. Oh, hello, Mike. What did you find out? Boss, you hit it on the nose. Good, Mike. I'm glad. Now, something else for you to do. Yes, sir. Check with the sanitation department at once. Ask what they've done with the cinders they removed this morning from the 3000 block in East 58th Street. Cinders? What I'm really after is a gun. The caliber... 38. 38. Mike, we must have it. Talk of a needle in a haystack. I know you won't fail me, Mike. Okay, sir. So you think I did not kill Eric? Strange, isn't it? But I have to get evidence to convince you of your own innocence. But if I didn't, who did, Mr. Keene? That, my dear, is another story. And a rather tragic one. Forgive me if I run along now. Oh, so you are here again. The old gentleman. Yes, I'm afraid I must trouble you again. With more questions? This is a matter of life or death. For whom? A woman, her daughter, other persons. Well, what do you want now? Permission to inspect your studio. I want to study the layout. Sorry, I cannot talk to anyone. Miss Avila! She slammed the door in my face. <laughs> Good morning, boss. It's me. Not fit to stand in anybody's office. Why, Mike, you're all covered with ashes. Like a specter risen from the grave. I've been digging through a mountain of ashes all night. Where? Oh, over on the East Drive. They were there taking it for landfill. Did you find it, Mike? Here you are, boss. Good work. Have a look inside. Mike, I'm going back to Mary Blaine's place at once. I beg your pardon, sir. Are you going in there by any chance to see Mrs. Blaine? Yes, Corporal. You are a Corporal, aren't you? Yes, sir. Bob Martin's my name. My name is Keene. I believe you're a friend of Bunny's. Oh, I'm crazy about her. I came up on this furlough just to see Bunny. She locks herself away from me. Won't come to the phone. I'm not sophisticated enough for her, I guess. I rather fancy she may soon have her fill of sophistication. Well... I just thought if you saw Bunny around inside there... I'll be glad to tell her you're here. Oh, thank and you, sir. And too bashful to break in. Thank you, sir. Oh, Mr. Keene. Oh, I've been waiting so anxiously ever since you phoned that you were coming. Can we speak somewhere privately? Of course. This door. Mr. Keene. Hello, Bunny. You have good news for us? Bunny knows everything I, I told her. I don't see how I ever could have thought Eric was glamorous. Well, we found a gun, Mrs. Blaine. Look at it. It's mine. The one I tried to get rid of. Not one of the cartridges has been fired. You are sure? My dear, you couldn't possibly have killed him. And for many reasons. What do you mean? You say Eric Plummer was facing you when you aimed the revolver? Yes, Mr. Keene. But the bullet actually entered from the side of his head. The side? In fact, judging from the lack of powder marks, from the distance at which the fatal bullet was obviously fired... Nobody inside that room could have killed him. Why, Mr. Keene? The room is 20 by 20. With Plummer sitting in the center at his easel, a person aiming the pistol with arm outstretched would nowhere have been more than 10 feet from him. But the bullet traveled at least 15 feet. 15? Then where did it come from? Outside the apartment. From a studio just across the narrow air shaft and through the open window of Plummer's studio. And the person who killed him? A young lady, I'm afraid, also a painter. 
We learned from the landlord that it was Plummer who engaged the little back studio for her a year ago. Eric did? Yes. And he was supposed to be so madly in love with Mother. For the past three months, her rent hasn't been paid at all. Plummer finally lost interest. The young lady, Miss Avala, seems quite hot-tempered. Charm. Glamour. And in the end, murder. Come in. Oh, Mr. Key. Captain Thomas. Your office said I'd find you here. I have a message for you. For me? It was addressed to the old gentleman. We figured out that means you. From from Rosa Avala. Yeah. Read it. Old gentleman. You are very wise. You guessed the truth. And now I will save everybody's time by sentencing myself. Rosa Avala. Oh, she... She committed suicide? Half hour ago, ma'am. I'm sorry about this. Truly sorry. Well, that closes the case. I'll have to get along now and write the police report. Goodbye, Captain Thomas. Mr. King... How can I ever thank you? You were innocent, Mrs. Blaine. I was happy to be able to help you. Eric, everything about him was so mean, so heartless. That reminds me, Bunny. I believe there's a boy, a very bashful one, who was hanging around outside. Oh, not poor Bob. Yes, poor Bob. A boy your own age, with ten times the real glamour of a man like Eric Plummer. Oh, poor dear. He must be furious with me. No, just dying to see you. My dear, whenever you're tempted to see glamour in a man like Eric Plummer, remember that all that glisters is not gold. Often you have heard that told. Gilded tombs do worms enfold. How terribly true. I've realized it for a long time. And now, so do I. All right, Bunny. Run along with you and make that poor, bashful soldier happy. <laughs> And so Mr. Keene concludes the case of the missing witness. Listen next week at the same time as he brings us the baffling and colorful case of the girl who sang too well. Every girl and woman knows that in order to be popular today, one of the most important things she needs is an attractive smile. A smile that reveals clean and sparkling teeth. And to the man in business, teeth that make a good impression are just as important, too. If you're not certain that your own teeth are as attractive as they should be, here's something you will want to know. The new Colonos high-polishing toothpaste does wonders in helping to remove those dingy surface stains. Helps reveal the natural brilliance of your teeth that adds so much to the charm and personality of your smile. I'll tell you why it does this. Its action on teeth is like that of a jeweler's polish on tarnished silver. So start using Colonos, a high-polishing toothpaste yourself, right away. You can get Colonos, K-O-L-Y-N-O-S, Colonos at any drugstore tonight. You have just been listening to Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons. Now on the air at a new time. Every Thursday night, 7.30 to 8, Eastern Wartime over this network. Don't miss Mr. Keene next Thursday night when the kindly old tracer turns to the case of the girl who sang too well. This is Larry Elliott saying good night for the makers of Colonos Toothpaste and Mr. Keene, tracer of lost persons. <laughs> Ladies, there's a wonderful new way to make floors sparkle like new in six to nine minutes flat. Use Aero Wax, the self-polishing wax that goes on in a jiffy, dries without rubbing. Its marvelous high luster adds beauty to your rooms, saves countless scrubbings. Yet it costs only 25 cents a full pint. Get Aero Wax, A-E-R-O-W-A-X, tomorrow. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.